Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox, and today I think we have the most DIY projects I have ever done in one video, and they are all from the dollar store. Now, before jumping into the projects, I do want to give a humongous thank you to today's sponsor, which is Simply Safe. Now, about a month ago, I posted my roommate's room makeover, where you guys saw me completely transform her bedroom, and I was super excited because that video was actually sponsored by Simply Safe as well. And then they reached out again asking if I wanted to do a like one month little follow-up on my channel, and you guys had so many questions about it, asking me how I liked it, my thoughts on it. Now, Simply Safe is an incredibly reliable home security system that is super simple and user friendly. The thing I love about it is that you actually get the pieces sent directly to your door, everything you need, and they have so many different trackers, motion sensors, and cameras that you can use throughout your space to kind of detect and monitor different areas. This system, you guys, was so incredibly easy to set up, and that's the one main thing I really, really love about Simply Safe, other than, of course, the security factor of it. But I was kind of intimidated when first getting a package of security security equipment because I was like, how challenging is this actually going to be? I actually set up the system in about 45 minutes and you guys, I'm telling you right now, it was just a no brainer. Like it was super simple. Everything connected up to the base station perfectly. For the past about two months that I've actually had this system, I can tell you guys right now, there is absolutely nothing I would change about this. It is the perfect home security system, especially for somebody that is on a budget because you get around the clock protection for just 50 cents a day with no contracts at all. As many of you guys know, the reason that I wanted to invest slash get my own security system was because I used to live in a very large unit in Los Angeles in a like large complex where there's tons and tons of apartments and security systems set up throughout the building. However, I now live in a duplex where I kind of have to take full reign on myself and I have to make sure that my apartment is secure at all times. I feel like this is such an elevated, modernized way to do security systems. And on top of that, it is also very, very chic. All of the elements definitely seamlessly align with your decor. You can barely even tell they're there. So I love that feature about Simply Safe as well. Marie! Marie, come have a seat next to me, right here, approximately. All right, so this is Marie. If you guys do not know, she's my roommate. We've lived together forever, literally like seven years. Um, literally. I'm going to ask you, Marie, what is your favorite thing about Simply Safe? The key fob. Yeah, the key fob is everything, you guys. It makes it so simple and so easy. Literally, all we have to do is click it. And the great thing about having two people that come in and out of the apartment is that the base station kind of like notifies you what's occurring. So when a door is opening, like I know when Marie's sneaking out, I know when Marie's sneaking back in, and I know when she leaves. Simply Safe is literally the best, and we love it. Yeah, you guys have to check it out. If you do not have a security system, definitely check out Simply Safe using my link below. It is simplysafe.com slash. Lone Fox. You're not going to be disappointed. It's so easy to set up and you guys are going to love it as well. And we're all going to stay safe together. Period. Alrighty guys, it is now time to jump into the projects. I have 10 dollar store DIY projects for you today. 10 is hard. Like, you know, when you go to the dollar store, thinking of 10 different DIY ideas can be a little bit of a challenge. So I hope that you guys love these projects. They are all super, super simple. And I also feel like these projects are very artistic to where you can really put your own personality and your own flair on them um, to make them fit your space or your design or your color palette, whatever it might be. So let's go ahead and jump on into these 10 projects. So let's get started. Alrighty, you guys, I wanted to kick this video off with a bang. So this is one of my favorite projects, actually. I love the way that it turned out. I'm starting off with a pool noodle here, and it's kind of like a corrugated shape. And I'm also using some lightweight spackle. Both of these products are from the Dollar Tree. And I'm using a coarse hair brush to apply the spackle to the entire pool noodle. I'm getting it in all of the nooks and crannies. But the thing I loved about this noodle was the intricate kind of detail to it. I thought it would make a perfect vase for some dried foliage or whatever you wanted to add in there. So I went ahead and applied a generous coat of the spackling to the entire outside of the noodle because it did really resemble foam so I kind of wanted to give it more of a plasterized effect and then I went ahead and let that dry for a couple of hours before bringing it outside and giving it a coat of my favorite matte black spray paint by Rust-Oleum. However you guys this just was not the color I was going for. I thought it would look amazing but when I stepped back and looked at it I just was not a huge fan so then I went in with this Krylon Lime Wash spray paint and I'll link all of these below for you guys. I went ahead and I sprayed it fully with the lime wash stone finish, which I thought would give it kind of a pillar vibe, like a 
ancient Roman pillar aesthetic, but like in your home. However, that was not the case either. So I just didn't really like the color inside. I tried styling it a little bit. So I brought it back in. I mixed a little bit of white paint with a tiny bit of tan to give it like a very, very light tone. And then I painted over the top of this, but I did really love how sandy the finish was from that limestone paint. So I guess it did work out in the end. I just gave it a full generous coating of this white acrylic paint over the top of all of it. And that finished off our faux stoneware base. For project number two, I actually drew inspiration from this bowl that my friend James has in his beautiful new home. I love the way this bowl looks. It's so stunning and organic. So I figured let's create it with a ceramic bowl from the dollar store and also some caulking. So basically what I did for this project was I filled the bowl with a generous amount of the caulking material. So I just pumped quite a bit of it on the inside and then I'm using my finger to evenly distribute it all around the inside of the bowl. We're basically wanting to create a new texture. And also guys, keep in mind, this is not a bowl I'm going to be eating out of or washing at all. It's more of a decorative object you could put on a shelf or a coffee table. So I went around, smoothed it around with my finger, and then I also kind of created this little swirly design because he has another bowl in his house, which I forgot to take a photo of, but it has a swirly detail in it, which I also loved. So I went ahead and used my finger to swirl to the top edge of the bowl and just give it a little bit more interest than what it had prior. So this is kind of creating a brand new texture. Once the bowl was fully dry, I grabbed a couple of different paints here. I started off with a dark, dark gray black tone and I kind of just painted it on the interior of the bowl and adding a little bit of a rust color as well, just to kind of almost give it like a rusty look. And next what I did was I mixed some white paint with a little bit of tan paint as well, similar to the first project, mixed that up. And I'm also going to be adding in baking soda. Now my friend McKenna recently did this on her channel. I will link her video below and I loved what she came up with. So I was like, I wanna create a textured paint as well and I went ahead and painted over the top of the first coat of color that we added. The key to creating like a distressed style bowl is to add tons and tons of layers of paint to achieve a nice kind of distressed look. So as you can see here I'm going back with my finger and applying more. Now the baking soda and paint mixture is really nice because it gives it a sandy ceramic finish which I love. So here you can see I'm adding like a little bit of a watercolor effect to it just to kind of give a wash of gray. I wish I did have brown paint. I was fully out of brown I think that would have been a little bit more of a nice antique finish. However, I went back, added another coat of the white ceramic paint that I created with the baking soda and honestly just layered it up over and over. And then as you can see the outside of the bowl as well, I painted that with the ceramic finish paint and adding baking soda to your paint when you paint ceramic objects like this is such an easy way to achieve a similar finish. And it's really easy and effortless. Just let it dry overnight and you're good to go. to make a project with some color of course so I went ahead and I picked up a couple bags of these colored rocks from the Dollar Tree along with this glass candle holder. Now I'm going to be using some mosaic grout here. This is white grout. However if you do not have this which I know a lot of people probably don't have this you can also use the spackling. However I've been wanting to use this for a long time. I've had it in my stash for quite a while so I figured why not go ahead and use the rest of it up. So I went ahead I smeared a generous layer onto the top of the candle holder and I'm going to be sprinkling on top the rock and just kind of like a random formation. I got this light aqua color and then this really pretty sky blue. This uh, pale pink color I wish was a little bit more vibrant. However, it worked great and I also added some white and then just a contrasting black as well. Now the key here is to kind of make it look a little bit like terrazzo. So I pressed it into the grout or you can press it into the caulking, whatever you have. Just make sure to press it down that way it has a nice smooth finish and you're gonna let this dry for a couple of hours. And then once it is fully dry, I added a coat of resin. Now I was I wasn't going to do this initially, however, I used resin on a project you're going to see a little bit later in the video, so I figured why not pour the excess over the top to give it a nice finish. I heated it up with my heat tool to pop any air bubbles, and that was really all. Just let it cure overnight, and that's your new trinket tray.
If you know me, you know that I love a good wall decor project. So I picked up some of these wooden beads alongside a couple of faux florals. And of course these wooden beads were just not in my favorite color palette. So I went ahead and I strung them on a string because I felt like this would just be so much easier to paint them on a continuous string. And I also did need to string them on a string for the project anyways. So I strung just a lot of them on a string essentially. So that's what we're doing here. <laughs> I then went ahead and grabbed this spray paint here. It's in the color matte clamshell, which is a perfect in-between of like white and cream. And it's also matte. So I just love this tone. And I went ahead and sprayed the full strand of beads. Now there's honestly not an easy way to paint these that I have found. If you guys have any ideas, please let me know in the comment section below. However, I just did about five coats continuously twisting them. And once they were fully dry, I went ahead and I tied around the string to a dowel here. This is just a 12 inch dowel and also on the opposite side. So this is the start of our wall hanging here. It's just a really cute little beaded section. And then I also wanted to add the hanging portion, of course. So I went ahead and I wrapped a little bit of string on each of the sides and made sure that there was ample space above for hanging the piece on the wall. And I grabbed a couple of these sprigs of eucalyptus, which I used from a past dollar store project and I had them in a drawer. So I pulled them out, glued them down to the top of the dowel. And the dowel here is just honestly going to be the supporting element that's going to support all of our florals. So I went ahead and I added a couple of those little sprigs of, I don't even know what this is, like a little bit of grass or something. And then I went in lastly with a little bit of decorative nautical rope also from the Dollar Tree and just wrapped it around the middle section because I felt like it just needed something there. It just wasn't fully finished. I glued off the tails on the back end, just let that cure for a couple of minutes, cut off your excess rope and hang it on the wall. You're good to go. For project number five, I actually drew inspiration from my friend Justin Ray's YouTube video, which I will link below for you guys. He created these really, really cool dollar store vases using Mardi Gras beads, and I wanted to do my own take on it as well. So what I started off with was a glass vase and also some of these party beads in a green color. You can choose whatever you want because we are going to be spray painting them. Now I'm going to be using my Gorilla Hot Glue Sticks, which are great for glass, and I'm going to be gluing the bead strand around the bottom half of this vase. Now the great thing about this as well is this is like a perfect technique to add texture to really anything so not only can you do this on bases you could do it on planters you could do it on a tray whatever you want to add like this really fun kind of bumpy rigid texture to you could do it with these mardi gras beads and they're really really affordable so it's a great way to add texture And I popped it into a box and I'm using this metallic finish Rust-Oleum spray paint in gold. And I just thought this would give such a cool kind of like vintage eclectic vibe to this vase. But not only was I finished there, I then went in with a little bit of this black carbon paint and some water to water it down because I wanted to dip the beaded section into this watery substance to almost give it an antiqued finish on the bottom. I didn't have any black rub and buff or anything that I could easily add an antique look to it with. So I continuously dipped it and dried it in between with a heat gun just to give it like a very very tarnished effect to the bottom and I love the way that it turned out. project that I get sent to me all the time that you guys recreate is a dollar store frame. So I figured let's go ahead and create another fun little dollar store frame. So I picked up a couple of the fall florals and I pulled them off of the stems because we are going to be giving these a nice coat of gold spray paint. This project is inspired by an anthropology frame set, which I also created an identical version of on my channel a while back. So just pull off all of the flowers that you want to use for your frame. I just pulled off extra so I had them and then I placed them inside of a box here. This is my spray paint box as you can see it's been well loved and I went ahead and used the same gold spray paint from the last project now because these flowers are super lightweight they are gonna fly around but do not worry because you're not gonna need to get them fully coated in this stage I just like to do this so I have a general idea of what they're gonna look like on the frame <laughs> 
pop the backing out of your frame so you could work on the front side. And again, this frame is from the Dollar Tree and it's a pretty brass color to start with. And I'm gonna go ahead and lay out some of my florals just randomly around the surface of the frame. I decided that I wanted to keep them kind of to the top right hand corner. That way, if I used this frame horizontally or vertically, it looked great. So I went ahead and started out with my leaves first. I typically tend to do the leaves first and then I went ahead and I applied on my flowers next. So I just layered them up however I felt like they fit perfectly on there. Um, and you can add as many or as little as you would like. To the center of the flowers, I also plopped in a little bead here just because I had these on hand and I thought they would add a cute little element to the center of all of the flowers. And then you're gonna pop this back into your box and really give a generous coat of spray paint to the top of all of those florals. Let it dry and style it on a nightstand or a shelf. When I saw these ceramic dispensers at the Dollar Tree, I knew I wanted to do something with them. So I figured let's create some beachy bathroom dispensers for lotion and soap. So I started off by applying some caulking to the outside of the ceramic dispenser. Now I just added again, a generous coat of this, smeared it on with my finger. No rhyme or reason to this at all because we are going to be kind of finishing off the texture in a little bit with a brush. So I smeared it all around, making sure to get all four sides and also the top section here. You can go ahead and tape off the little like actual top portion where the nozzle screws on if you'd like. However, I just made sure not to get anything on there. And I used a nice coarse brush here to kind of create this very linear texture on the top of the caulking. And all I did was kind of scrape it up and down. Now the next step is going to be applying sand. So I used the sand also from the Dollar Tree and I kind of poured it on the bottom third of the dispenser while the caulking was still wet. That way it had something to stick to. And I kind of tapped it around the bottom as well to make sure it was fully encapsulated across the bottom of the piece. Once that was fully dry, I whipped up another batch of our ceramic paint. So I used a little bit of white acrylic paint along with some baking soda. You're just gonna mix these together. And the more baking soda you add, the thicker the paint is going to be and the more clumpy the texture is. Here you can see I have a nice, smooth, almost frothy finish, which is the finish I typically like to go for. So I went ahead and painted the top section of these dispensers, wherever the white caulking was, I went ahead and painted over the top of it just to give it a little bit more of a finished look, making sure not to smear it across to the same sandy bottom. Once we had that painted on, I grabbed some resin here. I've had this in my stash forever. I bought the big bottles. You're going to mix equal parts of the resin with equal parts of the hardener and stir it for a couple of minutes just to set that up and start activating the process. So I went ahead, I stirred that up and I'm going to be using a paintbrush to apply a nice generous amount of this to the bottom third and kind of overlapping on top of our white section that we painted as well because I wanted it to have a glossy sheen, but I also wanted it to encapsulate all all of that sand on the bottom half. So as you can see here, I hope you can kind of see how far up I brought the actual glossy resin. So I brought it up a little bit over the top of the sand. That way the white section had some gloss to it um, and just let it sit and cure overnight. And once you're done, you have these fun little dispensers. As many of you guys know, Halloween is approaching and the dollar store has so many Halloween inspired goodies. So I picked up this creepy cloth here and I want to turn it into a throw pillow. So I layered two packs of it together and then I pulled a bit of canvas, which I'm going to go ahead and cut out a 16 and a half by 10 and a half inch square on. And those half inch sections are actually our seam allowance. So the pillow is going to end up being 16 inches long by 10 inches tall. And I used a ruler and pencil to mark this out on the canvas. And then I used some fabric scissors to cut out our canvas panel. Once that was cut out, I went ahead and I placed down my creepy cloth and I'm going to place this over the top of the creepy cloth. I love saying creepy cloth, by the way, and just press it down. Now, what I'm gonna do next is use some sewing pins just to secure this together because there are so many layers of that cloth material. I wanna make sure that it stays pinned to the backing layer and nothing gets snagged in the sewing machine when I go to sew it. So I pinned all the way around the exterior. I popped it in my sewing machine and did a simple stitch all the way around the outside of the pillow leaving about a four inch gap at the end. That way we can invert it inside out.
Once you finish sewing it, make sure to flip your pillow inside out. That way the raw edges are gonna be on the inside and the pretty clean sewn edges are now going to be on the outside of the pillow. Here you can see what the front and the back of the pillow is going to look like. I ended up using some scrap polyfill from a project that I did quite a long time ago. So I filled up the pillow through that opening that we left with all of that polyfill. And then once that was fully stuffed, I went ahead and I kind of secured that opening shut with a couple of pins and I ran it through my sewing machine as well just to secure that edge off. You can go ahead and hand sew it if you'd like to. However, I just did a simple stitch really, really close to the edge to finish off the pillow. Project number nine is a good one. I found these little wood planks at the Dollar Tree and I went ahead and I bought two packs of them. So I had 12 of them and I started off by adhering three of the planks together. So these are just square pieces of wood. They're about four and a half by four and a half inches. So they're perfect size to be coasters. However, they're pretty thin. So I went ahead and I used this quick hold E6000 and I glued three of them on top of each other. As you can see here, I'm pressing them together and make sure to just wipe away any glue that might seep out of the edges, but you're going to be doing this for however many coasters you want. I did a set of four um, with two packs of the wood planks. Once those are dry, I used a little bit of sandpaper just to sand down any of the edges because after I pulled them out from underneath the books, there was quite a bit of glue that had seeped out of the edges. So I wanted to sand off any of that glue. That way, when I went in with the stain I'm using right here, which is the early American wood stain, it would also stain the edges. So I popped open this can and gave it a good shake prior and then used just a paper towel to stain the surface of these coasters. Now I'm only staining about two thirds of the front side, all of the edges, and the back side. You could just honestly stain the entire thing if you want to. However, I was really, really low on the stain. So you're gonna see why I only stained two thirds of the front in just a minute here. I picked up these really, really cute terrazzo wrapping papers a while back on Amazon, and I just love the way they looked, and I figured they would be perfect for this project. So I started off by pulling one of the prints that I liked the best, and on the back side, I drew a two inch line from the edge. That way I knew how much I wanted the terrazzo to go on top of the coaster. I'm gonna be using this Mod Podge hard coat, which is just a, like it says, hard coat sealant, and I'm applying the Mod Podge onto the top of the coaster where we did not stain the right side because I'm gonna be laying it on top of our terrazzo wrapping paper up to that two inch line and is giving a generous amount of extraness extraness, a generous amount of paper on the left, right, and top sides of this coaster. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry for about 30 minutes. And then once that is done, I just went around on the backside and cut off our terrazzo paper with about an inch to spare on all of the edges. Once that was cut, you can just go ahead and snip on that gray pencil line as well that you can kind of still see from the paper where we added it initially. Snip across that because we're then going to add some Mod Podge to those side tabs there. As you can see, I'm going to add it onto the edge and the back side there. And I'm going to flip over that side tab and just press it across the side of the coaster and onto the back side of the coaster and just make sure it's nice and secure. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut down to kind of cut out the corners of our paper because then you're gonna wanna go in and secure the right tab as well. And lastly, you're going to secure that bottom flap, making sure that it overlaps the two left and right tabs. And that's how we're going to be wrapping all of the coasters. It's pretty simple and there's a lot of different techniques to wrap papers. So whatever you feel comfortable with doing, I suggest doing that, but I went ahead and I wrapped all four coasters with our Terrazzo wrapping paper. Once that was fully wrapped, I also added a coat of the hard coat sealant onto the top, making sure to only do the terrazzo section first, because if you do start using it on the wood stain section, the wood stain can actually transfer onto the terrazzo paper and just make it look a little bit dirty. So I just coated the entire terrazzo section and then the wood section. I added a little bit of canvas to the backside. I cut these down to four inch by four inch squares. That way it had a nice soft surface for your tabletop and I used a bit of fabric tack adhesive to just glue this down to the back side to hide any of our, the ugliness from that terrazzo paper and that really finishes off this project just let them dry for a couple of hours and you're good to go
And you guys have made it to project number 10. We are starting out this project by filling up a pan with some water, putting it on the heat, and we are going to be melting down these pumpkin marshmallow candles. I got two of them from the 99 cent store. They literally look like Bath and Body Works candles, but they are not. And it takes about an hour to melt these down fully. So I'm gonna go ahead and while they're melting down, grab two of these ceramic bowls also from the 99 cent store, and I am going to glue the bottoms of them together. Now, my friend Peony and Honey on Instagram created a similar planter where she glued two bowls together and I thought that the shape was so cute and perfect for a candle. So I glued these together, brought it outside and used my terracotta spray paint, which you guys know I love. And I sprayed the entire vessel with the terracotta spray paint. And this just honestly makes it look like it was handcrafted and that it literally was made of a terracotta finish. However, it wasn't. We're just giving it a faux look. So after about 45 minutes, this is where our candles are at. And I'm going to go ahead and glue in a brand new candle wick. I've had these for a long time from past projects. Um, I wrapped it around a dowel as well, just to make sure that the candle wick would stay centered while I pour the wax in. So pour the wax in very, very carefully. If you have any spillage, do not worry. You can easily wipe it away before it dries. So I poured in one full candle and there was still a little bit of excess at the top. I was actually surprised that one full candle filled it that much so i just filled it all the way up let it sit for about an hour and that is your new candle it's so so cute Alrighty, you guys, so you made it to the end of the video. That was a pretty long one, but I hope that you enjoyed all those projects or you can at least find one, two, or maybe even seven projects you would like to recreate yourself. Um, and if you did like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. I would love to know if you guys would like to see more videos where I feature more DIY projects in them. They do take me quite a bit longer to create for you guys. However, they're really impactful and there's lots of projects and ideas in there. So yeah, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, definitely subscribe to my channel. I post brand new home decor and DIY content here on Lone Fox every single week on Thursday and on Sunday. And last but not least, do not forget to check out Simply Safe. If you are in need of a home security system or honestly just want to find out more information, use my link below. It is simplysafe.com slash lonefox. It'll be at the top of the description box. And yeah, you're going to love it as much as I do. It's a really honestly an amazing service. Alrighty, guys. So I will catch you all in my next video. Have an amazing rest of your day and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye guys.